Well, hello, everyone. Oh, hi. Uh, thank you all for joining us for a listen through of season one, episode five, Secret Agent Man. Again, this is uh, just looking at the title. I think I know what happens this episode. But we'll see if I'm surprised. <laughs> they start to get more and more obscure the further they go on. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I have to say... You know, you and I were talking about this before we started. Mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed doing this. Yeah. Um, like going through and listening uh, to these and like having the chance to kind of think back and talk about stuff and have people ask questions like this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, I've really I've really been enjoying this. We we pitched this initially as just kind of a it's our birthday. Let's listen to the first episode. And then yeah, just um, yeah, I really uh, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, also, thank you. Uh, everyone for the uh for the gift sub and thank you sanity fallen for the prime sub uh welcome hey. uh it says rev always looks like he's in front of a minecraft block because <laughs> <laughs> i could not figure out to get i could not figure out how to get lights to work the way kim did so i had to build a background instead the trick is to have your bedroom just like like oppressively dark um, that was my problem i must have had too much light yeah yeah <laughs> and now it's too late to try to remedy it because this is here. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> I live here now. Oh, um, hopefully we can never change our color scheme. Yeah, right. Um, well, do we have anything we want to mention before we get started? Hmm. Um, gosh, if, uh, if you all have not yet filled out our survey with Fable and Folly, uh, go ahead yeah. and uh, and do that. You can it just it'll just take like five, ten minutes. You can do it as we're sort of listening to the intro of this episode. Um, the link's right there in chat. But other than that, I think we're good. Uh, yeah, I believe this is the first episode uh, with a, a song title <laughs> as the title. Oh, uh, here's one of my questions since we're talking oh. about titles. Um, yeah. Uh, has Tass always been the one who names the episodes? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so when we first started, um, because we kind of got into that time crunch, I, I've told this story before that we had planned to uh, have six episodes out of the gate, and we ended up only having five. That was because everyone told us, hey, when you submit to iTunes, it's going to take a week for them to process it before you go live. Uh, and so, you know, if you're not, you know, uh, submit a week before you want your show to come out. And so we're like, okay, we want our show to come out the first week of, of June. So I will submit it tonight after we're done recording. And I did at like 11, I think it was like 1135. And I woke up at 134 and it was like, all right, your show has been published. And uh, so the show went live with with just the five episodes. Uh, and uh, and because of that, we had to go back and, and do like all of the stuff that we were not prepared for yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had to get the episode titles. We had to get the descriptions, all of that stuff. Uh, and so I was busy editing still. Uh, and Tess was like, well, no, I can I can listen through and. Um, and, you know, and come up with the titles and this and that. And so that has been his job uh, really from from the first day. Yeah, because that's um, every time a new episode comes out uh, or is edited uh, and uploaded yeah. to the drive, Rev lets us know and Tass listens through it and titles it and writes a description. Uh, and then I listen to it later and cut a teaser for it. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's really the full like behind the scenes processes. We record an episode. And then I do a rough edit of it, and I listen for any pickups that we need. I go back, I get the pickups, I upload it, and when I upload it, I ping Tass and Kim. Uh, Kim goes through and listens to make sure that I haven't, in my like two or three listens through of it, missed anything because I'm you know too close to it. Uh, and Tass listens through and writes the uh, writes the synopsis and comes up with the title. Uh, and then from there, as soon as the title is posted. Uh, he messages Rachel, and so she then starts to find an image, and then a couple days later, she'll send me like five or six image options. Um, and then while Kim is doing her listen through, making sure that I didn't miss anything, uh, she's also making notes on a clip for the teaser, and then sending that teaser to Rachel as well, so she can come up with an image for that. Exactly. 
um and then and then the show and then usually the sunday before that episode comes out we record the intro and then that gets tagged on and then the episode yeah. goes up <laughs> yeah we could usually like I, I could have episodes posted well beforehand but i like doing the intro the week of mm-hmm. because there's always something that has that comes up uh and so you know there was a point where we were recording the intros in advance but then it started to like it started it started to like bite us we're like oh we didn't get to t- pitch talk about this thing because that intro was recorded already so we'd have to go back and do it and do we want to spend that time and so now we just do that do them the week um kim do you listen through at normal speed or accelerated i listen through at normal speed and like i listen like i don't uh it's I'm I'm not like playing something else or, or doing something else. You know, I'm I I listen because I want to make sure that I uh, that I'm not missing anything that I should be catching. So, yeah, I listen at normal speed and just try to pay very close attention so that I can if uh, if anything has slipped by. Sometimes you just need a fresh pair of ears to listen to something yeah. uh, that I can uh, message Rev with like down to like the minute and second and like the thing that I noticed um let's see uh shadow server says jake got the easy job with one little jingle and he's just done (laughs) (laughs) Uh, jake has jake does have a one of the trickier jobs because for perilous tides jake does in perilous tides we do you know in in the crit show we don't really have much other sound Mm -hmm. um, because we just have you know just really clean audio but for perilous tides we do have uh, an environmental background and Jake puts that in. Uh, and the way that he has to do that is he has to, he listens to the episode and takes notes about when he wants a sound to come in or where a sound effect needs to happen. And then he goes back and then he essentially mixes that live. He hits record, plays the episode and then plays the sounds and the background effects that he wants to happen uh, on his MIDI keyboard or on uh, Sirenscape in real time and records it as it as it happens. That's amazing. I didn't know that it happened in real time like that. Yeah. That's super. Uh, that's super yeah, cool. Yeah, because we had kind of thought that when we – because we got a bunch of stuff from Sirenscape, and I was under the assumption that, like, we could just grab those sound effects out and have them, but you can't. Mm. You have to be playing them in real time to use them, so. Um, that's amazing. Um. Yeah, and then of course, whenever there are musical moments uh, in the main show, uh, Jake also scores yeah, all of those. I, those are always moments that I try to get him like, like three or four weeks in advance at least, mm-hmm. so that he has enough time and that uh, everything times out correctly. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, um, but yeah, so the reason why I asked if Tass, uh, if Tass titled the episodes from the beginning was that uh, of course he did because it's a music reference and. Uh, you famously are not a I do big know music that. fan. I do know Secret Agent Man. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is really interesting. So that means that the birthday of the show was an accident. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 100%. Amazing. Um, let's see. Um, have you taken anything away from listening to these early episodes? Um. You know, someone asked me on the first episode um, if there were things that I would go back and change if I could. And I initially said no, Mm -hmm. but now kind of listening through, I'm like, oh, yeah, there are a couple adjustments that I would make. Um, Take away, um, I mean, not anything that I I don't think that I hadn't learned already. Like I'm like there are moments where it's like, "Eh, there's not really any stress here. Don't make them roll. Like now, I wouldn't make them roll for stuff that in these first episodes I'm making them roll for. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, and a question from Sanity Fallen. Uh, I know this early on, you set up a lot of stuff that gets called back to later on. Was all that planned out that far ahead, or did a lot of it just work out? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it, it is intentionally leaving myself a lot of possible hooks. Mm-hmm. And then the ones that need to become important do, and the ones that don't become important, people forget that they were ever there. <laughs> <laughs> Until we're re-listening to them right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, let's get started. Okay.
Hey everybody, this is The Crit Show, and I'm Rev, and this is episode 5, which is a very special episode, because we were actually able to put together a fairly coherent episode, while at least one of us was super doped up on pain medication after a fun little stint in the ER. See if you can figure out who. We're constantly trying to expand our understanding of Monster of the Week and the Apocalypse system, but we can always use help. If you're listening and you know of something we are really screwing up, some game mechanic or playbook move or rule, <laughs> you can contact us at thecritshowpodcast at gmail.com and let us know what it is. We may not get it right next time, but we'll sure try. We plan on playing a number of different games on The Crit Show as time goes by, but right now we're playing a game that doesn't really have critical successes. Sure, we've had a number of crit failures, but it's not quite the same. I know we here at The Crit Show have favorite stories about critical successes or critical failures. We already know ours, so we'd like to hear yours. If you've got a favorite story about a natural 20 or a natural 1, send it our way, and we'll start sharing those stories during future episodes. Anyway, that's all for me. All the power coming from... You know, before we move on, I suppose we should talk about this. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no one ever emailed us about things we were doing wrong. I think a lot of it because we figured it out pretty quickly or maybe had a conversation with someone on Reddit. Um, and then, the, you know, we'll see how many of these natural... How many of these crit stories come up. <laughs> uh, but I do believe in... On our, uh, our first year anniversary, we have a in memoriam section on that episode. <laughs> And it's one of the things that's mentioned that we're like, you know, we kind of treated it like the the Oscars, uh, things that had passed away in the last year when it was like the shopping music and oh, the God. crit stories. And there was something else. I can't remember what off the top of my head. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're just starting out. Um, and you also, try some stuff. like, um, none of none of these episodes had even come out yet when you were recording that. So, like, you know, we didn't yeah. you didn't know. Um, yeah. It's but it's always interesting to see like uh, it's better it's better to try and see what all what all pans out uh, exactly as Josh says throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks <laughs> yeah exactly not every piece of spaghetti is gonna stick <laughs> exactly and so um, shout out to the to the crit stories uh, that just was spaghetti that <laughs> fell onto the floor <laughs> we read like we got like four of. <laughs> Uh, people are requesting a gif of Kim's dance to the theme song. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's fair. I, I, for, I should have posted on Twitter. I mean, think about it, but I did share on Facebook just on my personal account, a, a video of Jake Tass and TJ dancing to the intro at their microphones. <laughs> it's very funny. Look, it's a bop. It's impossible not to dance to every time I hear it. Yeah. Um, all right, so I don't remember who was uh, who was apparently uh, super coked up on uh, on painkillers. So I guess this will be a surprise for me as well. Yeah, we'll find out together. Uh, hopefully, you can't tell in the episode, but hopefully, ultimately, I can. The, ultimately, it's always the same person. <laughs> 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 that is not any commentary on any kind of addiction or anything. It's an actual problem. Anyway. <laughs> Here we go. All the power coming from the grid goes down into one wire and into the suit of armor. Supercharge the armor. You turn into the theater and you see that the curtain, the stage, everything is engulfed in flames. And, I mean, we just run through alleys and jump fences. Part of the brick over his shoulder just poofs into dust. Someone has just fired a sniper rifle at you guys. Can you get us out of here? I can get us somewhere. TJ appears on the steps outside of the theater, surrounded by cops and the fire department. So, Jake, you are at home. You're not sure where the other two went. Who do you want to go to first? You know who you go to. I think my, my answer he is always, knowingly. it's got to be TJ. TJ, you appear, and Jake's not there. And you feel intense heat behind you and lots of lights in front of you. And there is cops and firefighters, and they kind of jump at your appearance. And then Jake is beside you. Jake, you see fire and cops. And on your appearance, they start to draw weapons. Freeze, freeze. What, hey, where'd you come from? What are you doing? Put your hands up. I want to... Put one hand up and one hand on TJ's shoulder, and then I want to try and teleport us to task. All right. Roll act under pressure. Oh. To get your hand out fast enough before these cops respond. Oh, that's good. Uh, eight. 
With an eight, you can either teleport too soon before you touch TJ. You can teleport away, but leave something behind <laughs> of yours. Oh, oh, I know who it is. Or you can teleport away and leave something behind of TJ's. It's going to be a leg. Yeah, when you say leave something behind, you mean a possession? Yeah, not, not like a, a physical not body, a body part. part. Correct. You're not getting splinched. I mean, I don't know what he's got on him. <laughs> he's got nunchucks and a multi-tool. Those are the things I know of. Mm -hmm. Good cell phone. And the key fob. One of those things is enough to find us. I assume I'm going to leave behind my hammer if I leave something behind. And it is bullet time. Like, you see the cops raising their guns. -na 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 DJ, I think I'm going to leave behind one of your things. Okay. You reach out as you raise your hammer. You're able to touch TJ's shoulder, and you both vanish. And the last thing we see of the burning theater and the cops rushing up is a double-fold wallet hitting the ground and falling open <laughs> to show a driver's license. <laughs> it says Terry James Tincher with an address. You guys appear at Steak and Shake. Out of character. Yeah. Oh, no. Yep. In oh, character, God. you have no idea. Oh, God. Oh, Steak and Shake. Delicious. And do we just see him in there eating his fresco milk? You do. You do. Walk up to him, and I'm like, well, that didn't go according to plan, but at least we're out. This is fine. This is fine. The cops definitely just saw me and TJ, though. Uh, where? I sent him to the theater. Ooh. And I had to go pick him up. Okay. We'll deal with it. I Somehow we should, we'll deal with it. I think it. we should call an Uber from here. Yeah, that's not a bad call. Are you guys going to eat? I He's might, eating. Are you guys going to eat? I might order a uh, take home a sack while we wait for the Uber to show up. Order a jalapeno crunch burger and pull up the Uber app on my phone. Uh, no, you don't have a phone. Oh my God, I lost my phone. That's and right. his is dead. Yeah. His is dead and yours is gone too, isn't it? Yep. You can't literally call an Uber, can you? It's all... Nope. No, uh-uh. <laughs> We need a ride. We need to call somebody to give us a ride or something. Uh, yeah, I go to the just the counter and say, hey, can you guys call us a cab? Oh, sure. Uh, that'll be here in seven to ten minutes. And are you having the cab take you to your house? You said downtown. Oh, yeah, you said you downtown. go to IPT. IPT, yeah. Maybe they can help us out a little bit. All right. Yeah, so you get in the cab. And they take you to IPT. Are there people at IPT 24-7? Yeah, absolutely. You know, things go bump in the night, so to speak. So um, there is certainly a team that is essentially there to take calls or be doing research on, you know, reports and things like that that might be coming in that would give us a tip. You're able to get there. You put in your code. You get inside the building. And Margaret is there. We'll pause before we get to Margaret. All right. Sanity <laughs> Fallen asks, what would you have done if Jake had chosen to leave one of his possessions? Would it have been his wallet or something like the hammer that he was worried about? Uh, I think it probably would have been something more mundane like TJ's wallet. Um, it would have been, you know, his keys, his wallet. Um, yeah, leaving his hammer behind, you know, we'll we'll get to that later. Um I don't think I, I would have taken like his primary, ooh, his pri really his primary thing from him in that moment. Yeah. Um. So it probably would have been like his keys or something. Mm hmm. Um. But you always in like when you when you suggested it that TJ would leave something behind. Did you did you immediately know that it was going to be the wallet? No, no. I think that. Whenever I get, tell someone like, okay, so you'll leave something behind, or this other person will leave something behind. That that's kind of a on some level a stall tactic, because <laughs> then when they're like, okay, yeah, I'll leave something behind, I'm like, and then I'll pause. But oh, what you got? <laughs> <laughs> What's on you? Um, yeah, what do you? What do you got? Um, so yeah, it, it. I don't think I knew off the top of my head that it was his wallet. Um, unless the only reason that I may have thought right away that it was his wallet is because he had talked about his wallet in a previous episode. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was in my head at that time of like, oh, we've talked about his wallet. That makes sense to leave behind. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Sandy Fallen response says, wow, I wonder how different it would have turned out if Jake had been the one uh, that had to do the identity change instead of TJ or if it would have been any different at all. Yeah. Yeah. How different would that have been if Jake had to do a... A different identity. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, and Jeremy asked, wait, Kim, you said that you knew who it was. Who was it? Um, I'm pretty sure it's it's Tass. Oh, the for the, yes. for the pain pills. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Because the, the poor deer is plagued by kidney stones. Yeah. All right. Well, you boys look like hell. Yeah, it went bad. It all went real bad. Well, you brought with you a rather motley-looking crew. Who are your friends? When you asked me if I had any other help that I could potentially find, these are them. Hi, I'm Jake. Hold up my hand to shake. I'm Margaret. I'm Tej. Hello, Tej. How are you? I'm worse for wear. Oh, yeah. Road hard, put to bed wet kind of thing. Uh, yeah. You didn't leave the theater in too bad a condition, did you? Oh, it's on fire. (laughs) (laughs) No, but seriously, like, how is it? Last I checked, it was literally on fire. It was on fire. I accidentally set it ablaze with a, a bunch of wiring, faulty wiring. Oh. Yeah, my bad. Hey, but uh, no more soul bat, right? Yeah, yeah, huh. All right, so what do you boys need? We're, Medical attention. We're all really bad right now. And a place to crash until things cool down. That is not a joke about the building burning down, but it is now. Uh. But an and what is this theater equipped with? Uh, weird tech gadgets and cover identities. Yeah, all right. Um, I think we got something that should be able to fix you boys up. You be careful. Basically, what it does is we took this from a werewolf that we had killed. Some of the boys down in the lab were able to harness some of the cells in their bodies that regenerate from wounds and mix that with some time travel magic. And we inject that into your body and it speeds up time in your body so that you get a werewolf's regeneration for a moment, but like it had been a couple days. Be careful, it's addictive. So don't use it too often. And I'd say that there are other known side effects, but really we've only used it a handful of times. Yep, fine by me. Cool. I'll take one shot. Well, I'm only giving each of you one shot. Oh, well then, great. Then I don't want anything else after that. And she leads you down into one of the labs. There's a couple of guys down there working. And you can see that there are a couple of creatures down there that they're doing tests on. And they're trying to use technology to replicate some of the abilities of these creatures by harnessing cells or energy from them and then mixing it with technology. And she brings you over to a large case attached to the wall. And there is different serums in it. And she takes out a number of needles and goes down the line, gives each of you a shot. And it's pretty weird and pretty fast. You feel this sudden urge to eat raw meat, like you just start salivating. And you smell fear, and then you feel fine, and your damage is healed. Well, that was unique. Oh my god, that was like instant gratification. Like I said, it's it's fairly addictive. All right, well, we're good. I think we need to buckle down and sort of consolidate what we know, and tomorrow we should give Rev a call, meet up with him at his place, and figure out where to go from here. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Do you have uh, some cots that we could crash in somewhere? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's the equity cots back <laughs> to the theater you can sleep in. That'll do. So you guys... <laughs> oh, you never want to sleep on the equity cot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the beginning of werewolf serum. Yeah. Um so uh I Rev, why did you uh why did you introduce werewolf serum? Was this you trying to think of a way that the boys could heal damage very quickly so it wasn't involving like a lot of like days or weeks of downtime? Yeah. 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 Um you know, it wasn't specifically for fights, but I wanted them to have a in my head They probably would have only ever done this like at the theater Uh so that we didn't have to have because it takes a long time in Monster of the Week to heal. Yeah. um, So that we wouldn't have big chunks of time between story arcs. Um, But yeah, like that, I'm I'm very happy with Werewolf Serum. Like that is something that they're like, oh, do you have something that can help us? And I had asked Tast like, oh, what is what does this place do? And that was one of those things that just kind of rolled off my tongue. Uh, oh, yeah, it's werewolf serum, and this is how they made it, and this is what it does. And oh, yeah, you know, be careful, it's addictive. And as I said, that I jotted down like how many doses it would take before you would start to have to like fight against the urge to have it. And then I also set out how many doses it would be until it would, it would turn you. <laughs> so good. Yeah. I was, um, I, the, that pl- that played out for so long. It did. It did. It became such a uh, such a huge part of the first season. Um, definitely. Yeah. Um, this is a good. This is a good question. Um, it, I'm trying to. I'm trying to ask this without spoilers. Um, mm-hmm. When Margaret meets the team, mm-hmm. um, I guess 
I guess TJ didn't give his last name, um, but I was wondering, like, um, how much of that had been, was already connected in terms of TJ's ties to the yeah, IPT? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't. Okay. Yeah, like, that did not come up until um, I knew what TJ's purpose was. Okay. Uh, because, you know, he is the mundane, but Jake is there to protect him for a reason. And I didn't know what that reason was yet. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Makes sense. Um, also, it would also make sense to me if Margaret was just playing all of that very close to the vest. Uh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he also didn't give his last name. He didn't, um, so that so. was very fortunate. Um, yeah. But, uh, um, yeah. Let's keep going. Oh, hello, hello, Gabriel Fox. Oh, hello. So you guys make your way downstairs, deeper into the theater, in their green room, actually. For two of you, it's like, oh, I hadn't seen this green room before. It kind of does look like the one that we just burned down. I deserve that. No, you don't deserve that. It was really TJ who burned it down. <laughs> I helped. That's fair. You see a couple of cots laid out. What do you do? Uh, get ready to go to bed. Take the armor off. Set the like. Set it down next to the cot. And you need some help with that, man? Set the hammer down. I don't think I do. It's a relatively light armor. Just empty my pockets and crash hard, I imagine. Yeah, I have guns on the floor. Fall onto the cot. Okay. I um, fall onto the cot myself as well. As I'm laying there, I realize that oh, I still have all the stuff in my pockets. And I reach into my back pocket. You realize that your wallet's not there. I'm feeling for my front pocket again. It's not there. Even if you check okay. your prison pocket, it's not there either. <laughs> <laughs> Did I forget that at home? Huh. I must have forgot it at home. Do you leave your wallet at home sometimes? Sometimes. Just because the other day you gave me a big speech about whenever I'm out, I have three things on me. I always have my <laughs> I wallet. Do. I do. <laughs> Right. And my keys. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Called out. Oh crap. Oh crap. Guys. You can tell we'd all just yeah, seen Deadpool. Have you <laughs> yes. seen my wallet? Um, no. Why would I? I? I don't know. I thought maybe I might have left it in Tass's car. Oh my god. Did you leave your wallet in the car? Face I'm... down on the cot. I swear to god I'll kill you with my own hands. I... And as he makes that statement you i don't know if you were clear-headed enough to think about it before but your car is outside of this burned down theater with a license plate on it well if it's in the car then that's two of us made i wonder what piece of identification i left behind somewhere but i think we crossed that bridge in the morning you do see there is a cord in the outlet in the green room for a phone i plug my phone in so your phone sits for a couple of moments and powers on and right as it powers on it starts to ring do i recognize the number you do it's your mother oh hey madre what's up tj why are the cops here looking for you uh mom mommy <laughs> <laughs> madre i love you hang up Boop. so you hang up on your mother <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've got to spare her all of this as much as possible, and lying to my mom would just make this worse. What was that about? Uh, it was my mom. The cops are at my house. Oh my god, no. <sighs> How? I assume it's because they found my wallet. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's... um. Give me your phone. Why? He's going to put it on Do Not Disturb. Give him my phone. I break it in half. Come with me. You know what? I've always wanted to get rid of phone. I, I've been looking at my phone <laughs> for far too long. It's time to live life a little bit. Here we go. I need to stop looking at my life through an Instagram filter. That's right. Um, leading them back to Margaret. Yeah, she's up in the main office. Uh, do you have a minute? You, you need something else? Yeah. How I... you feeling from that? It's like seven days worth of uh, a werewolf regeneration in like three seconds. It worked pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, it worked really, really well. Yeah, I feel really good. I've had this erection I can't get rid of. Oh, yeah, that's the red rocket effect. Oh, uh, yeah, I thought. <laughs> no, I hate this. If you look, I don't, don't look. look, though. I don't look. <laughs> you don't want to know. It's eyes to the sky. I'm not looking below anybody's waist for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I... <laughs> so chat saying, Rev, I feel like you used to be a bit spicier. Uh, so yes and no. Yes in this show, but it all happens now in Perilous Tides. Like all of all of the dirty jokes and the innuendos happen in Perilous Tides now, and so I think it makes this show cleaner just by accident. Because now you have an outlet. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, I forgot about that one. Oh man. Yeah, because I was gonna say, um, because I've only I've only recorded with Rev with Perilous Tides or, or bonus content. To me, Rev is Rev is usually fairly <laughs> spicy with his commentary. Yeah. Uh it just usually doesn't make the edit. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I do. I hide it behind the Patreon wall. Uh <laughs> thank you for the bits, sanity. <laughs> Um, um yeah like i I, th- I think that just a normal episode of perilous tides is fairly spicy and then the outtakes that Tass <laughs> puts together <laughs> are filthy the one today <laughs> i will i won't <laughs> there was an <laughs> there was an outtake today that will eventually i'm sure make it onto one of the we are falling apart that will eventually make it onto one of Tass's reels but it was a story about how uh, a sperm bank works in a pirate society. No. <laughs> oh, boy. It involves coconuts. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, so you can yeah. listen to the first six episodes of Perilous Tides for free on our <laughs> website. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, Rev, have you met TJ's mom? Yes. How yeah. accurate of an impression was that? Not at all. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but it got such a good reaction from TJ. Like that that real time moment of him, his mom, mother, madre. Like I love moments like that where they're just hilarious and I haven't done anything to the moment to make it that way. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> Oh, the red rocket effect. No. <laughs> Is that one thing that you'd like to that you'd like to take away from these early episodes? No, I, I think that's a great joke. It's canon now. <laughs> I'll I'll stand by that. <laughs> mm, I'll stand by that. Uh, you know what? I feel like a similar thing happens um, in a in a book series about. Uh, I don't want to like spoil anything in the book, but there's a, a book series about, you know, mystical things in the real world. And someone gets like juiced up with like the power of a werewolf and just that like that hunter ambition stuff. And that's one of the things that they are constantly dealing with <laughs> in their day to day life is that they're always uh, at attention. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. So. So we have a situation, and... Uh, Besides the burnt down theater? Yeah. Move. He's been made, and I can only imagine what it looks like that we just purposefully went in and set a building on fire. Oh, what do you mean he's been made? I, think I don't he... mean the terminology, but what happened? I understand yeah. the lingo. <laughs> I thought you might. We think he lost his wallet. They're looking for him, the police. Oh. They've already gotten to his house. Oh. I was hoping maybe we could do something for him as far as uh, as a cover. Uh, what, what do you mean, do something for him as a cover? I mean, your cover identity is just kind of, you work at a different place, and you aren't, like, I can justify your car being there, because you were looking at the theater for us. Sure, sure. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't think we can justify him having been there with me with the fact that... Were you seen? We were. Both of you. TJ yeah. and I, yeah. Did they have anything of yours? Not to my knowledge. But they did see him teleport away. Who? Both of them. Oh. Look, I, I know he's just Joe off the street to you and to this company, but I would literally be dead if I had tried to go in there on my own. These two are legit. They're good at what they do. I barely did anything to kill that soul bat. What's your name again? Tej. Well, that's your Christian name? Uh, no, it's Terry. Hmm. And where's the jizz come from? No, the I, I, could I, guess. Sh- I could show you, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, think God, Thread Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, uh, it, it's Terry James Tincher. And what, and what do you do? Terry James Tincher. I work at a bookstore. Quarter no, house. what do you do that makes me give a shit of saving you? He... Uh, uh, did I ask you? How long you been working here? Well, two years. How okay. long you been working here? A week. Yeah, and if it was my new job, I wouldn't be cutting off my superior mid-conversation. You're not answering my question. Uh, I build things. I built, out of his car, a power suit of armor that... Didn't last long, but Margaret every now and then would put the hammer down. Yeah. No. Margaret's a badass. She pretty quickly is like, okay, you guys are going to do whatever you're going to do. But early on, she 
tried to get people in line. <laughs> Our suit of armor that utilized all the lights in his vehicle to stop the soul bat. Really? In like five minutes. Hmm. Follow me. And she takes you downstairs. Uh, you guys go past the laboratory where the men in the lab coats are working to a room that is just filled with what you would assume is junk. It is scraps. It is electronics. It is pieces of old cars, tractors. There is the top of a tank. There are helicopter blades. It is a massive room just filled with things make me something i'm going to weird science together mm -hmm. a, a playstation i really want a new playstation no maybe later but right now i'm going to create a robot that when it's turned on it goes to the most beautiful person in the room and hands them flowers roll it I got an 11. All right. All right. Nice. So what is your condition? It requires my... huge amounts of power or fuel. But you don't have any problem finding that in here. So you construct, what does the robot look like? It looks like, do you guys remember in Futurama, there was the little greeting card that, that started an uprising with Bender? Yes. <laughs> right. It looks like that, like a little stick person, but within the tubings and everything, whenever it pulls out the flowers, it's a full on bouquet of flowers. Oh, so it almost uses a magician's trick wand mm -hmm. hidden bouquet thing. Yeah. So its arms are like made out of trick wands. Yes. And then it takes huge amounts of power or fuel. Are you powering it through some alternative source? Like is this little thing fusion powered or is it carrying around behind it a stack of 20 car batteries? <laughs> is it connected to a generator so it's dragging wires behind it? What is the big source of power? It's got to be plugged in. It's always dragging around a little cord and everything. All right. So. And so you make this, and you turn it on, and it walks over to Jake, pulls out some flowers, and hands them to him. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks at you, and she's like, I'm supposed to be impressed that you made a robot that gives your boyfriend flowers? I take a deep smell of the flowers. I am so soothed. I'm so pleased. <laughs> Uh, not only did it just give him flowers, it picked out the exact most beautiful person in this room. Don't say that, this part out loud. Don't say this to her. <laughs> that takes a lot of processing power, and also it takes a lot of aesthetic AI. How does that help me kill monsters? It helps you kill monsters because I can also program it to pick out any kind of attributes that you need monsters, that monsters have that can help to kill those monsters. Did you just have a stroke? I did, I think. <laughs> This is cute. I don't know if we're having a laugh. Show me something that tells me the time, the effort, and the money it would go into saving you will be worth it to my agency and my men. You just told me you built a suit of armor that defeated a soul bat, and then you made me a pipe cleaner that gives out flowers. Hey, I'm make something for me to train against. Make something that can fight me. I will make a sparring partner for Jake with swords for hands. <laughs> <laughs> what else is it made out of? I love it. Like any other interesting pieces, or is it just the only thing that matters are the helicopter blades, I assume, are the sword hands? Right. I mean, it has like pressure points on it. So like whenever he hits those things, like those certain pressure points, mm -hmm. that certain parts of its body fall off to make it harder or easier for him as he likes. All right. Roll it. That would be a four. No. So what happens? What does it say on a six or less? Uh, something goes horribly wrong. You make this robot with propellers for hands to fight with Jake, and you turn it on. The blades start whirling, and it turns to the flower robot and just chops it up. Aww. And then starts eating the pieces with this really strange metallic mouth that you made to like be knocked sideways to show that it had been injured in the jaw. And you realize that you have accidentally made a technological cannibal, that this thing hungers for the electronic parts of other robots. And it starts to like dig through the trash heaps looking for other things. <laughs> Bruh. You <laughs> I have to say. Oh my God. <laughs> that, um, you know, very early on, like very early on, um, we got a lot of messages, even like donations to coffee <laughs> where people were, uh, um, shipping 
Jake and TJ or TJ and Tass. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, there was a long time where it was like a it was not only a joke for us because we were so surprised by it, but it turned into this thing of like you can now track back where like, where we kind of planted the like oh yeah the most beautiful person in the room is Jake and um, give your boyfriend flowers give your boyfriend flowers and like there was a lot of people who seemed to have wanted a uh, um, a uh, Twilight esque choice for tj <laughs> to have to make between like his 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 best friend and the the demigod who's designed to protect him um i mean i'm i'm here for it um <laughs> i get it i get yeah. it and also i definitely get it because jake is canonically yeah. the most beautiful <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah, it, it'll be a long time coming, but uh, I'm so happy much, much later when I get to to come back to that <laughs> that robot. That yeah, I was I was just thinking, I was like, whatever happens to that cannibal I remember what happens to that cannibal yeah, robot. That cannibal a, a robot very, comes back in a big way. Very sad or very sad, very very far pull. <laughs> oh Ori sad in the corner because you said Jake is canonically the most handsome. <laughs> No, I think it's Ori sat in the corner because because Jake and TJ being a thing. Oh, that's fair. Um, that, look, okay, yeah, I I welcome uh, I welcome listeners to ship anything and everything. The second one, yeah, yeah that's fair. It's all good. <laughs> I'm here for it. Okay. I'm also quietly shipping it. I just can't publicly say it now because I work. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's part of the contract. <laughs> things bruh you made a robot zombie did oh god it's eating other robots and or electronics Ugh. and you see like a montage of a like a an 80s movie where we're seeing flashes of famous robots through our childhoods and you see that like oh they're old and they're rusted and they happen to be in this junkyard they're being eaten by this other robot oh god yeah it's pretty gruesome do I need to hurt this thing or not? I mean, right now it's just focused on eating its kin. I mean, it does have pressure points um, on it, so um, you, can, um, um. you can bust it up. It's not a problem. I mean, I made it to where it would basically fall apart as soon as you um, hit it um, in certain um. areas. Well, you also made it to not eat other robots, so I'm not sure I trust your design right now. <laughs> You did so good with the flower bot, though. I know. It just, it was very inspiring. How about I give you a little instruction? Sure. I can see you're minded towards conventional weapons. Really the best builders, I think, outside the box. You fought against this soul bat, and you knew that it was weak to light. Instead of making a light gun, you made a suit of armor covered in light so that you could get up close to it and grapple with it, and it would be damaged. That's thinking outside the box. So we've got a creature that, let's say we have a creature that feeds off of the color of the world. Off the color of the world? Yep. It can take the spectrums of light and turn them into emotional powers. I want you to make me a device that makes the world around you black and white. If you're going to work for us, you got to expand your mind a little bit. It's not all guns and armor. It's about devices that solve the problem with that creature. So I want you to build me something that makes the room and everyone and everything in it look like it's in the Wizard of Oz. But like the first part of the Wizard of Oz. Is there a black and white TV I could find? Yeah. I assume there's a bunch of prisms and things like that that I can look up. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's a gun, but it's got like a little mini TV on it and it shoots black and white light. And the mix of these two suck the color out of whatever it hits. It's almost like it sprays it with black and whiteness. All right. Roll it. I got an 11. The requirement is it needs a rare and or weird material. And what might that material be? I believe that is up to you. It needs a cursed diamond. Ooh. And you know that. So this isn't going to work completely, Margaret. I need something from you guys if you have it. What's that? A cursed diamond. Oh. She reaches in her pocket. (laughs) And she pulls out a ring and she throws it to you. That's from my second marriage. Pretty sure that counts. Give it a try. Uh, do you mind if I take this apart? Oh, please do. I uh, get some tweezers. I undo the little clasps on the diamond. I pull it out and I place it into the machine. All right. So um, I just start on one side of the room and just shooting the room and turning it all black and white. 
And you do it to everything and everyone in the room? Well, not to everyone. I'm not going to blast my friends with it. That's not very nice. She said everything in the room. Okay, well then I... Sorry about this task. And he's black and white. Okay. And then I hit Jake with it. Sorry, Jake. No, suck it. I angel wings behind him. (laughs) Oh, now it's become target practice. You better get him. Just reach back behind me and blast him. Just over the shoulder, blast me. Excellent. Uh, I thought I got you. Yeah, something I saw in a movie once. I start walking around like Charlie Chaplin. You find some grease paint on the <laughs> ground that you can put on a mustache. Good, <laughs> guys. And then I'm like, sorry about this, Margaret. Bzzz. Oh, look at that. Takes out her phone and takes a picture of herself and of you guys. No filter needed. <laughs> Damn it. Wait a minute. I thought you said this was for some kind of creature. Well, hypothetical creature. There's called... stuff we're fighting all the time that we don't know what it does. I just made up a scenario. Oh, great. It's for a creature oh, called well, the Instagram. I wasn't going to like let a monster loose in here or something. I told you, though. He's legit. So how does it wear off? Yep. Yep, what? You didn't ask me about that. I just asked you about well, it. Well, just now, but yeah. you didn't ask me about that before when I made it. That's fine, but how? I don't know. Oh. I don't know how it wears off. I guess I could try to make a to, machine to... Do we have to paint ourselves every morning now? <laughs> <laughs> the painted man, he haunts my dreams. No, I fact. just have to have a different color TV. Oh my God, you just put in the cathode from a color TV instead of a black and white TV. Yep. That's you it. test that theory? Sure. It works? Good. I love it. All right. All right. It took some prodding, but uh, that's interesting. But um, I've got a room full of guys upstairs who can do this. That's why we got this room to keep them on their toes. What's special about you? I'm kind of glancing over my shoulder at Jake again. The gods want him alive and protected. I don't know why. They didn't tell me that part. What gods? Norse gods. Hmm, Which one? Presumably Odin. Based on, and I just kind of like hold up the hammer and channel some energy through it. Might be kind of a one trick because you kind of made the same person twice here. Has he talked to you? He doesn't like talk to me in that I hear a voice more that I am implanted with visions and feelings. I have been given one task in my life and it is to protect him. Roll manipulate someone. Uh, Okay, that is, that's a 12. So you say that he's important enough that some Celtic, Greek, who was it again? What god? Norse. Norse god gave you power specifically to protect him. So you're kind of a package deal. I think we can do something to help your friend out. We've been looking for someone to test this new technology on. What kind of new technology? Yeah. Well, everything we do here mixes science and magic and some of the creatures that we combat's natural abilities. We've found a way to take a vampire's glamour ability where it can look like something else. If you tell someone who you are or share with them some deep connected moment, something that only that person would know, they'll see you for who and what you actually are. The only problem is can't be taken off. It uses a little bit of your blood to work. It's not going to cost you any permanent harm, but you can't undo it, except by the condition I just told you, and that's a one-on-one basis. Someone that works for us that doesn't seem to exist any time they're caught. No record of them on file. No history of them. You're ours in the field until we tell you otherwise. There's pay. There's good benefits. But you're going to work off quite a debt and not a debt of money. That's what I can offer you. Are you telling me that I'm going to be someone completely different than who I am right now? Well, you're going to look different and you're going to sound different to anybody that you don't share the secret with. It'll get the cops off your back and, well, you're going to have to come up with some story as to why you're not around anymore because you won't be around anymore. If it gets the cops off my mom and dad, that's all that's really important. All right. All right. I'll do it. This sounds like a step towards destiny, bub. Whatever these gods are that want something for you, this seems like the next step, you know what I mean? I'll give you till 9 o'clock in the morning if you want to say goodbye to anybody. Be in the lab where we gave you the shots. 9 a.m. sharp. I'll see you boys later. She turns and walks out. Uh, Pause there for a second. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, uh, Revington, Margaret has had two husbands. Correct. Um... Which husband is the, uh, is, you know, the one that I'm asking about. Which uh, husband he's is the that? First. The first he's husband. The first. Yep. Okay. Um, what happened to husband number two? We don't know. Do you know? I do. <laughs> it just has, it has never come up. Oh, that like, 
Margaret is such is such goals. That's the funniest thing. She's, it requires she's a, cursed, had a, life. a cursed diamond. She's like, yeah, just no, no big deal. Yeah, uh, here's my here's my last wedding ring. Oh, so good. Um, let's see. Um, questions about um, Jake keeps referring to his god as being possibly Odin. Uh, yeah. Did you? At what point did you like? were you very set on the identity of Jake's God and the gods in general? Uh, so it was when he met them, mm-hmm. um, you know, we, a little bit of a spoiler here, but in the next story arc, Jake will actually encounter his gods. Um, and they do have a conversation about like, Oh yeah, you see me as, as Odin, you see me as a Norse God. Cause that's, kind of the best way for you to place me in the world you understand okay that's not really what i am but that's fine that's how you see me Mm -hmm. so yeah it it was more so based around uh how jake needed to be able to perceive his 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 i don't want to say physical form but his presence in the world Mm -hmm. makes sense um yeah because you you kind of always knew the identities of your of the crit show's pantheon yeah 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 yeah, we we took the the weapons, um, and that was right before we started. When when Jake chose a god, uh, I I looked at the weapons and I thought, okay, so I know that there's some history. I know that all of the the quote unquote gods aren't around anymore. Mm-hmm. The ones that are left, what would they represent if these were their weapons? Mm-hmm. And so then I gave them all. You know, they all have kind of a, a more generic name. They are all the something, and it's, you know, usually connected to a, a, a passion or a drive um, that someone might have to to pursue in life. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Um, so my other question, um, I mean, I, I'm sh- you couldn't have possibly known that there would have been a reason for... Um, to start prepping this this glamour or cover identities other than Tass name drops that that's one of the features that IPT provides is cover identities and then also yeah. TJ leaving behind his wallet. But I guess I'm just, uh, how did you think of all that right on the spot or seemingly? I mean, uh, because I did have, um, you know, TJ dropped his wallet in the last episode. And so I did have that as a possibility in my head of like, okay, so TJ has been found out. I don't know what they're going to do with that information. Mm -hmm. Um, But Margaret, I mean, they have cover identity. So Margaret's going to have a way to deal with this. If they don't find a way to clear TJ's name. I see. And they, they pretty quickly decide like, Oh yeah, we're not going to be able to deal with this. Let's just ignore it. And then they go to Margaret, you know, task goes to Margaret right away. Hey, can you help? Yeah, I can. It's not going to be, a way that clears his name, but it is going to utilize one of the, uh, the tags that he has. Mm-hmm. So I did, I, I, in, on, in some way, I just did that. Like it was a retake, <laughs> like I was going to be able to just cut that part out. Um, but I, I did have a little bit of prep time to, to think about how this works because it was between episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I didn't know if it was going to get used, but I had a feeling it might get used eventually. Nice. Uh, great. All right, let's keep going. Okay. Uh yeah, I'll uh I'll go say goodbye to my mom and dad. I'll um I'll get you there, buddy. Thanks. We see the outside of TJ's childhood home where his family has lived their entire lives. Jake and TJ appear outside of it. TJ turns to Jake and thanks him and walks inside. Jake sits down, looks out at the stars, thinking about what's happening now to the man he's supposed to protect. We see through the window of the house a somewhat tearful goodbye. He's not really able to explain exactly what's going on or why he has to go and why he has to go away so far, but he promises them that he'll write and that someday they'll see him again, but for now he has to go. And you can see that it is hard for them to understand or accept, but eventually they do. TJ walks out of the front door of his house and turns back to look at it one last time and feels a hand on his shoulder. We see that it's Jake who asks, are you ready? TJ responds, I've actually got one more stop I'd like to make. We see a small house in a suburb. The pair appear outside of it. TJ starts to walk towards the door and realizes, oh my god, it's five o'clock in the morning. How would I do this? And he turns around and walks back towards Jake and halfway there stops. 
rummages through his pockets and pulls out a notepad. He takes a pen from his other pocket and jots something down, walks over to the mailbox, tears the note from the notepad, folds it up and puts it in the mailbox, and lifts the flag. He looks up at the house and smiles. They meet mid-driveway. Jake again asks, are you ready? TJ steals one last glance at the house and with a smile says, I am. It is nine o'clock. Are you guys... Who is um, that? <laughs> you know, I, do, I don't know. Um, so I, you know, I let TJ tell me what he wanted his his time to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that was something that he he wanted to leave a letter for somebody. And he didn't tell us who. And because this was really early on where we thought we were going to kind of inject more of our actual lives into it. Uh, but we pretty quickly got away from that. And so this thread doesn't really come up again until like season three. Um, and this is, you know, this is episode five. And so this was something I was editing like the day it was supposed to go out. So this is, I guess this is another spot where if I had the chance, um, I would give Jake, give Jake the time to, um, you know, put music under that. That's not just the, the noodles. Mm hmm. Um, because obviously he did not have time to write music for that because we had no idea it was coming and then the show launched <laughs> before we were ready. Surprise. Um, yeah. Gosh, yeah. And I would have had them voice their own lines too. Mm-hmm. But. I'm so curious as to who, as to who that is, what that is. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, but it is, it is mentioned again very briefly at the start of season three. All right. Um, wait, do you all do you call that musical cue the noodles? That's great. That's because of me. Yeah, I, those are those are the crit noodles. I refer to it as a as the noodles. I needed that sound bite for something, and I didn't know how to describe to Rev what I needed. I'm <laughs> like, I need that part. That's that's like just like noodly the doodle the noodles the crit noodles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the recap music is crit noodles. The crit noodles. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Which it took a, you know what? It was a, we were calling it that amongst yeah. ourselves for a very long time before Jake ever heard us do it. <laughs> Cause it was just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And he, and he was like, what, what are you talking about? We're like the noodles, the crit noodles. And he goes, what are you talking about? <laughs> and we had to explain the story to him. He's like, oh, okay. Weird. <laughs> like just kind of moved on, but it was <laughs> something that we took so for granted. <laughs> And we said it to him, like, well, you know this. And he was like, what are you babbling about? You know the noodles. <laughs> yeah. You made the noodles. <laughs> and they're delicious. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's keep going. Okay. It is nine o'clock. Are you guys going to join TJ here for this, whatever is going to happen to him to change him? Yeah. I don't think we want to leave him alone for this. I think we want to be there. Yeah, I definitely Go. Okay. Guys, I don't want you here. Okay, go away. <laughs> go on, <laughs> kid. I'm a big boy. Margaret comes in, and one of the tech guys from the previous night joins her. The technician goes over and opens up a small steel case, and inside of it is a ring with two gems on it. One of them is blood red. The other one is clear, and he walks it over to you and holds it out. Margaret says, you ready? Yep. All right. And she plucks the ring out of his hand and hands it to you. Put it on my left middle finger, my favorite of all my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and I just slip it down. As you slide the ring down on your finger, you feel this strange, like something is touching your finger very lightly. And you can see as you look down that there are all these tendrils, almost like cilia coming off of the ring. And you can see them start to weave into your finger like they are sewing themselves to your flesh. It hurts for a moment, but not bad. The ring on your finger, as I said, has one red gem and one clear gem. And as you feel the ring tighten, the other gem starts to fill with what you assume is your blood and become red. And you see the other gem empty. And as it empties, you feel this little burst of power inside of you. Jake... And Tass, you see this shimmer appear over TJ. And standing before you is not TJ anymore. You see this red-haired man with just the right amount 
a five o'clock shadow, blue eyes and pale skin. The image fades away. You know this is TJ, and for some reason being present at this moment disperses the magic. But you do get a brief glimpse of what the rest of the world sees when they look at him now. Margaret looks at you, then turns and walks across the room to where a printer has just finished printing a number of documents. She picks them up and shuffles through them, nods with approval, and walks over to you and hands them to you. It's a birth certificate, social security forms and tax forms, a contract for employment, all filled out except for the places where a photo should go. Your eyes scan across the documents and you see the name printed there is Roger Jameson. She looks at you and smiles and says, welcome to the IPT. So TJ has had his induction ceremony, and you guys are in the commissary eating lunch. Is there... I was like, oh, end of session? That can't be right. Already? I a, no. I did, I did a transition there. I don't do those anymore. <clears throat> oh, Roger Jameson. Roger Jameson. All right. So um, uh, why that appearance? Why that name? Uh, those were all things that TJ picked. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he picked the name, and he picked the look. <laughs> and then I don't know if it, I don't know if it ever I'm sure it comes up at some point. Oh yeah, it does. Never mind. I won't spoil that joke. I think that might be this episode. <laughs> <clears throat> um <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That was one of those moments because we've we we've gone, you know, this is the 5th episode, but mm -hmm. again, we were we recorded all of these before anything released. Mm -hmm. Writing that descript or not writing but describing the ring and what it was doing and how it was working. That was the first moment doing this podcast where I was like, Oh, I think I can describe stuff in a fairly like unsettling, but not gory way. And it became something that kind of becomes important to me as a storyteller that I, every now and then I'll pick a specific thing to focus on and describe really intricately how it works. And it's usually pretty unsettling. But I remember their faces when I was describing to them the way the ring worked, and they were not happy. Yeah, listening to it, I was also not happy. Um, <laughs> but it is very good and very, um, very evocative. And Rev, I know that you love yourself some magic items, so I think I, you I also do. had fun uh, thinking about what sort of item this would be and what it would look yeah. like and what it would do and how it would work. Yeah. yeah. All right. So TJ has had his induction ceremony, and you guys are in the commissary eating lunch. Is there anything you want to do today? Uh, yeah, I think we need to find you. Kind of uh, deconstruct what in the hell happened. Do we get new phones from IPT? Yeah, as you guys left, they had a little packet for you of phones and <laughs> some loaner car keys, since your car is garbage. Oh, yeah. what's Ooh, the rental? Yeah. What do we yeah. got? You're not going to like it. Oh, um, it's my car, isn't it? No, it is a uh, 2003 PT Cruiser. No. I'm all right uh, with that. I would oh. rather vomit in my mouth and swallow it again than drive a PT Cruiser. I'm going to wreck this car on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Wait till you see what you get next. You guys Shh. are so unappreciative. Then you can drive. Okay, happily. Yeah, enjoy um, that piece of garbage. Shotgun. Okay, yeah, so I'll text Rev. Hey, man, sorry for the delay, but we finally got new phones. Where are we supposed to meet you today? He gives you an address, and it's basically across the street from that steak and shake. We'll head to the garage, and I'm driving. And I drive to the address that he sent me. Oh, it's one of those PT cruisers with the, like, color-changing purple to green. That sucks. <laughs> does it have, a like, a vanity plate? It does. It says... It's my favorite thing now is just making him make something up right now. <laughs> Uh, it says uh, IPT Cruise. God damn it. I regret that. Oh, I that's regret actually that not setup. bad, but at the same time, I hate it. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe you've done this. Okay. We drive to the place. That was one of my favorite things early on was that, you know, we all came, we all came from an, uh, a performance or an improv background except for Jake. And he was always so early on fascinated or impressed by how quickly we would come up with stuff. So he just loved to throw things at me and see what I would come up with. Um, it was really like a, a very 
uh, like in our honeymoon phase of our of our friendship because it was not something he was used to at the time. Um, our very first uh, end of day stream was the same way too, where I, I had a, a magic knife. And uh, so my connection was with Jake and I was like, oh yeah, I think that you helped me do this and blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh yeah, what kind of creature did we hunt? I was like, oh, it was like a six armed bear and I had to use the knife to kill it. Da, 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 da. And on the, on the, on the VOD, he's, he goes, did you just come up with all that off the dome? I was like, yeah. He goes, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Seamus says, that's one of the things that I love about the crit show, how tight it is. And I'm always amazed how you do it live on the streams as well. Yeah. Yeah. Just your improv background. And yeah, I, on the streams, I, um, and uh, we've talked. I've talked about this before on the streams. I stop myself from doing stuff because I I would if there's a silence. My impulse is to be like, okay, well, I'm gonna, but I don't want to step on anybody. I want to make sure that everybody has a turn, you know, quote unquote turn before I do something again. Um, so there's a lot of time in in our streams where you know someone else is is taking a moment to think, uh, or the or you know if the keeper says, okay, so what are you all doing? But if I've just done something, I make myself. Uh, kind of hold the reins and and not go again. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to be a good scene partner. You are, and uh, you're uh, you're a great player because you're always uh, you're always thinking when it's not your turn what you're going to do next, um, which, is, <laughs> uh, which is great. Um, Super important for a stream. Yeah, extremely important that you um, you're never just sitting there passively. You're always thinking about what what your next move is going to be. Is very is super great awesome yeah. to play off of um valor fricative says rev come up with a new monster right now go oh uh okay i'm gonna do it off of your name fricative uh so it is a monster that uh it can actually absorb the friction around it and make anything any surface that it's touching becomes frictionless mm -hmm. and that is how it traverses the space like the, if it gets enough people around it it can cling and connect to any surface uh, and the only way that you can defeat it is by getting it into a place where it doesn't have enough things around it uh, because that friction builds up like a barrier around it. And so like when a weapon comes in to hit it, it doesn't because there's friction that like almost like its own gravity that stops it. Uh, and so you have to get it into a place where it it doesn't have contact with anything else. So you almost have to like get it in the air. You have to get it to jump. Uh, I think that would be the weakness that you would discover is that you can only damage it like when it's leaping, when it has made the choice to disconnect itself from whatever it's touching. Amazing. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> uh, chat loved it. Very okay, nicely good. Nicely done. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love. Yeah. I love monsters and, and freaking. Uh... Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for the bits. And now we have a new monster that I'll have to work in at some point. The Velar Fricative, which uh, yeah. is this little friction monster. Um, uh, Chad is now saying uh, a new Patreon level have Rev make you into a monster. Oh, nice. Make you into a monster or make you a magic item. Oh, man. That would be good. Yeah. I do love magic items. All right. All right. We drive to the place. No, we don't. What's I'm it? irate. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> So you guys arrive at the building and you go inside and you see that he had told you it is apartment B12. And that's actually in the basement. The first floor is A's and then the basement is B's. Does it look like a one story building from the outside? It doesn't. Well, how many is it? It looks like maybe three. Well, if B is down, then what's up? You can't find anything. There's no stairs going up. But there's like a ceiling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Weird. Okay, well, I'm going to go downstairs and find uh, the door to B12. Yeah, it's at the end of the hallway. There are 12 doors in this hallway, uh, six on each side. And I knock on it. Your phone vibrates. Uh, I'm going to look at it. It's a text from me, and it says, is that you guys? Yep, send. You hear a couple of clicks and a chain, and then the door opens, and I peek out. Hey, who's, who the hell's this? Hey, man. Why are you bringing Ron Howard's younger brother here? This is, <laughs> hey, he called you his younger brother, so that's, oh, that's something. Uh, this is Roger. Rev, mm -hmm. um, remember that time I, I went to your house? And in actuality, it was your apartment. 
in college. What? Who have you known me since college? Uh, yeah, yeah. You've known me since college, especially. Oh, Willie. Uh, no, 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 no. no, The redhead I know. Uh, remember that time that Tej came over to your house or apartment, and he was playing Spider-Man Two on on your Xbox, and. He accidentally turned off the power to his ex to your Xbox oh, when, when he was he, saving. He thought he like was was saving something he should have, so he yanked the cord out so that it wouldn't save. Yeah, and then it wiped the system. And it wiped the system. Yeah, I remember. TJ, me. What the? Oh God, are you a vampire? No, 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 oh no. Ugh, 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 gross. Right? Show him the ring. Show him the ring. Oh yeah. Uh, check this out. I got this cool ring. We're engaged. And, uh, <laughs> it's on my There's second. two. There's two in this episode. <laughs> I ship it. Um, I ship it. Yeah. Uh, that, is, that, is a, uh, that is one of many real life TJ stories of uh, I, I had, uh, I can't remember which Spider-Man. I think it was Spider-Man 2. Um, but I had played through it and Tass is uh, just addicted to collecting things. So he was going around and collecting all the tokens around New York City. It was that first Spider-Man game where you could go literally everywhere in New York. And TJ got on and was playing and he saw that it like started to auto save and he panicked and ran up and unplugged it so that it wouldn't do that. Then I don't know if you know this, but it says on everything, like do not unplug don't while it's saving. Turn off your console. And so it just wiped everything. So, and, and not the first time in his life he did this. He saw what had happened. And then said to the group who were not in the room at the time, hey, guys, I got to go. I'll see you later. <laughs> just left because he didn't want to deal with the ramification of what just happened, especially knowing that it was the second time he had done it. Uh, he did it to our buddy Ryan um, with his uh, I think it was Zelda two. Um, there was like elimination mode in Zelda and TJ thought for some reason that that meant like he would fight another Zelda. <laughs> and so he selected elimination mode and then picked Ryan's Ryan's uh, playthrough and it just deletes the playthrough. And so then he turned off the Nintendo and left. <laughs> <laughs> TJ's uh, flight or fight response is always flight. Man, he's that the the crit show exit is real. Yeah, just oh yeah. leave. Um, yep. That's oh boy, that's so much. Um, Josh is saying the Roger thing doesn't really last very long, does it? No, like he he tells me right away, so we don't have to deal with that. Um, but then it it so rarely comes up. Mm-hmm. We never really acknowledged the fact that you know people are seeing it's it's funny. This was the thing that I didn't say earlier. After the fact, I can't remember. It probably comes up later. Um, but we had quickly discovered that the description that TJ had given us of what he wanted to look like um, was one of the one of the dads from Modern Family. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so I always I can't remember the actor's name, but we looked it up, and for a long time, like that was that's probably a bunch of outtakes where I'm like, okay, so and whatever the actor's name is, what are you doing? <laughs> Jesse Tyler um, Ferguson is that actor? Yeah, Jesse Tyler Ferguson. That was exactly who you described. Um, so yeah, and but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't come up very often because they no longer meet anybody who would know TJ. Uh huh. So it it like it's it's a weird thing that like it's still happening in the world, but it never became it was never important to describe. Like, so on some level, it seemed like we had forgotten. But it would have been weird every time to be like, and just a reminder, you know, he has red hair right meeting, now. He has, yeah, he has red hair right now. They're not seeing the real you. It's like, well, you know, the audience is seeing the real TJ because they know it's TJ. Mm-hmm. If this was a TV show, they would all see him correctly. They would see him the way that, you know, you saw Sam Beckett on uh, Quantum Leap. Yeah, and he's still going around introducing himself as TJ. It's just that, yeah. for instance, like when we meet NPCs later on, they're just meeting TJ, who looks like Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. We're engaged. And, uh, <laughs> it's on my second or my first favorite finger of all Is time. Is that blood inside of that diamond? Is uh, that a blood diamond? Yeah, it's a blood diamond. <laughs> That's 
Not the yeah. same kind. No, uh, it's. Oh, I different. mean, it's my blood. Wait, what kind do you mean? I mean, like a blood diamond, like a clear, empty diamond that takes your blood to power magic. Oh, oh. yeah. Then, then yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I had to disguise myself because apparently some assassin knows my face and all that sort of good stuff. Well, and mostly also, and also the cops. The cops. Yeah. And I was going to say, if it was an assassin, why didn't they? Like, do they not care about you two? Yeah, no, it's mostly he just needs deep cover now because oh. uh, they have his wallet. At the police station where they do criminal investigations. Oh. So, uh, c- you going to let us in? Or are we just going to chill out? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm and... sorry. I wasn't going to let Mitch from Modern Family into my house. But there it is. See, that's <laughs> you. Why wouldn't you let Mitch from Modern Family into your house? Yeah. He's a dick. Like, he does not deserve Cam. Yeah, guys, come on in. I'm sorry. I just, I was startled by the unfamiliar face. I stand by that statement. I mean, that's true. Yeah, and guys, come on in. I'm sorry. I just, I was, I can't, Cam is delightful. Um, And Josh saying, getting a new identity and then continuing to use your real name, <laughs> I think is a prime TJ move. Is, like, oh, is peak TJ energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, come on in. I'm sorry. I just, I was startled by the unfamiliar face. Understandably. And we enter his domicile. Yeah, he closes the door, and you see that he's got a series of locks on the back of the door. Not all of them look like locks. Like, one of them looks like a leaf with a twig on it that he puts across the door. And one of them looks like half of an arcane symbol, and there's a piece of chalk hanging there, and he redraws the other half on the frame of the door. Fancy. Well, this line of work, you got to be careful of all kinds of different stuff. Sure, sure. Uh, Is there any, like, furniture to sit down on or to plop down on? There's actually just a hallway and then a stairwell going up. Oh, this is not an apartment at all. There's an entryway. Yeah, yeah, the the basement ones are lofts. Uh, Yeah, come on up. As you come up the stairs, you can see that there are little rooms sectioned off. There's an area that's got a bunch of (laughs) chairs and books and bookshelves. There's an area that is a kitchen. There's an area that's a bedroom. You can also see what almost looks like an operating table or an examination table with uh, some various supplies around it. Is it at least clean, this operating table? Or is it not like blood and shit no, no, and very, everything? Yeah, it's very clean. Oh, okay. You really got uh, you really got a spread here, bub. Like, this is pretty cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. They kind of set you up with a location and any of the stuff that you might need uh, based off the job. And so I've just been collecting stuff that I've had to use throughout the time I've been doing this. Um, when did you become a doctor? Uh, never. Oh, I'm just, just curious about the operating table. Oh, that's just for, you know, if someone gets injured or if I get injured, you know, you want to have a clean, sterile place to try to take care of that stuff. Oh, okay. That is uh, right there. That is kind of the the most extreme we get in um, my early delight in giving NPCs like half of a playbook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, I'm know, saying I, this I, is this is Rev having yeah, a haven. I very clearly have a haven because I wanted the team to have some place to go that wasn't just the theater all the time. Um, so do you happen to know off the top of your head what three options you picked for Rev's haven? Obviously one is infirmary. Yeah, uh, I don't remember what they are off the top of my head. Lore library, um, mystical library, protection spells. You have protection spells. I have protection spells and a, I think a mystical library. Yeah. If I if I it, I can't remember if it's mystical library or lore library that I have. Yeah, but it's definitely one of those two. Yeah. Um, and speaking about protection spells, uh, Velar Fricative asks Reb, do you know what all those locks protect protect against? Uh, in my head, they were they worked against the kind of thing that they looked like. So, like the 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 twig and leaf uh, protected against like dryad kind of magic, like nature magic. Um, but no, I didn't go too deep into them. But in my head, they were all protecting against the kind of thing they they kind of looked like solicitors. Solicitors, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, that would that would make sense because if you if you took the protection spells option, then it's just your haven is safe from just monsters across the yeah. board. Um, yeah. yeah, very good. Do you have this whole building? No, no, just just this one apartment. So, Rev, uh, we were thinking, mm-hmm. you know, that you should probably go ahead and just, you know, fill us in, man, because I think we're a little taken aback. What do you want to know? Just anything that you think you might know that would help us out with this. Like, this is clearly something we want to start 
kind of investigating. There was an invisible person trying to murder us that, what, they sucked this ley line dry? Like, what in the world? And any input about this world, this is not stuff that we really know, you know? Yeah. Anytime that I've seen a ley line used like that, it's a group of people doing some kind of ceremony. You know, sometimes they can naturally go dry. I mean, I guess we assume naturally. I guess something could be using them. Actually, that's kind of unsettling. I never thought about that before because energy isn't really created or destroyed. It only, hmm. But yeah, anyway, yeah, I, you know, sometimes the ley lines are dry. Um, so I guess that things have to be using them. But the ones that we let people know about, I mean, we know the kind of rituals or the things they're trying to power with them if it's some spell or some piece of arcane technology or whatever. Like I said, I've never seen a person be able to, to do it, but you said there was only one set of footprints down there, right? Yeah, there was one set of footprints down there, and then there was a ritual site on the roof, too. What do you mean, a ritual site? Like, the same candle layout was on the roof, and if I were to put money on it, I'd say directly straight up above it. Really? Yeah. And he goes over to one of the bookshelves and pulls a book off and starts flipping through it. You know, and I, I did this... Uh, early on, I th- Kim, I think just heard it, uh, but, and I, I got out of that habit, but you can hear me roll dice there. Yeah. Uh, cause I decided to roll, I, you know, I had gone as far as to give Rev a couple of moves. And so I rolled dice there to see if he knew something to help them. But I, I tried to get away from that and just like, okay, the NPC either knows something or they don't. Mm-hmm. So does that mean yeah. that for a hot minute Rev had stats? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah goes over to one of the bookshelves and pulls a book off and starts flipping through it. You know, I've never seen this specific layout before of candles around a ley line, because a lot of times with candles and a ley line, it's specifically to help channel the energy, but I don't understand how this would help, especially if it's just a single person. But you said that you think the same pattern was on the roof? Yeah, it it was definitely the same pattern, and I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it was directly above where it would have been in the basement. How much of the stuff did you guys get to explore while you were there? Like, I don't know what you guys found before you found me. Uh, Not much. I mean, really, we were in the door and dealing with those imps. Um, And from there on out until we got you and and headed to where that ley line was, there was not a lot of investigation. Uh, I didn't investigate a darn thing. It was survival. Do you guys have some time? Yeah. Would you mind going back... Not to the theater, but around the theater. I've got this hunch that, look here, and he opens the book. And you can see inside the book, it shows a pattern of candles. It's not the pattern that was there, it's just a pattern. And you can see that it's repeated multiple times, and it shows it in depth, that it goes through levels. Oh, sort of like a, a 3D, three-dimensional mm-hmm. sort of stack. Then at the very top level of it, the same pattern is repeated, but much further away. You use the candles to focus an energy and then keep something kind of contained in a bubble. Do you think you guys could go see if around the theater there are candles out there? It's kind of a long shot, but something about it just feels feels right. Mechanically, he's using one of his moves and got to know that this is part of a ritual. I don't want people to think I'm just metagaming for you. Yeah, I don't see... Which I then realize is the better way to do it. Yeah, exactly. Um, (laughs) I on the... Yeah. I know something. Eye on the Ball asks, Rev, do you think your NPC Rev voice sounds any different from you? Is there anything you do differently, intentionally, or otherwise? Um, I I do, um, because sometimes I'll start to do it and then I'll stop. Um, but I try to, and, and this is something Kim can attest to, you know, when you are performing, when you're talking in front of a group of people, you automatically elevate your voice a bit. Mm-hmm. You you start to project a little bit in it. It automatically pushes it just slightly higher. So when I am rev, I, I, I try to slow slow my voice down, and then I just try to talk normal. And it's just a little slower. The octaves just slightly less. Um, and yeah, th- there's like a little the rev. The NPC has a little more like curiosity and a little more like a bounce in the way that he talks. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not much difference, but there's enough that I can tell when I'm like, oh, I need to say that again. Yeah. I mean, there is just a natural shift if you're, uh, if you're in front, uh, of an audience or performing, I hear it in my own voice that like, I think like my sort of when I'm on voice is a lot 
it's slightly higher pitched than like my normal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little lower and a little more monotone if it's just me. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, I can't imagine by now there'd still be just cops and stuff wandering around a charred building. Um, I'd say if we're going to do it, the time is now. Sure, and I mean, they're not going to recognize me anyway because of my disguise. So, right. I mean, right. There's yeah. no reason to recognize me. I'm a little questionable, but we'll find out, won't we? Yeah. You have like a, a hat and some sunglasses? Oh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe disguise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, if you guys wouldn't mind... Go out and look around the area around the theater and see if you can find... Do you remember where they were laid out in the roof? Like, if you could kind of do geography, you might know exactly where to look. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know... Yeah, I know where it was on the roof, and if there's something about that that would kind of give me an idea of where I should look on the ground, yeah. Well, I mean, if you if you can remember where the the candle layout... Uh, I, and it'd just be a bigger layout in that same way. Uh-huh. Around, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, we can handle that. All right. All right, so this is where I... Um, Toss Jake the keys that I had pickpocketed from his pocket to him, real casual style, over my shoulder and say, all right, let's go. Everyone at the table seems dubious about that. Yeah, you should. You should. <laughs> I demand a roll. That's fair. What would this be, I guess? Uh, uh, it depends. Are you trying to do it so that you look cool, or are you trying to do it for <laughs> some actual reason? Just to look cool. Uh, then cool. Okay. Real cool. That is an eight. Okay, so mixed success. Uh, yeah, you slip your hand into Jake's pocket, <laughs> and you get the keys, and you start to pull them out. His gum comes with them, and you put it in your mouth, and it's not a flavor you like. So I'm chewing on it, but I'm trying to look snazzy, and yeah. I toss him the keys and it's, say, let's it's, ride. And it's not even like a flavor you don't like. It tastes like the gel that the dentist puts in your mouth, Oh, and it's ew. the flavor you hate the most. But I'm selling it, baby. Yeah, I mean, they can kind of tell. Okay, um, let's go. <laughs> yeah, are we going to pick a, an Ariane Park and look around on foot, or are we going to just drive around and look out the windows and hope we see candles? We should probably get on foot. And Okay, well, then how far are we going? And he would tell you before you left that it needs to be on the same plane, so it would at least be as high up, if not higher, than the ones on the roof of the theater. Okay, so we're looking for rooftops. Okay, where are you going? Um, so if we, well... First, just like going past the theater, is it gone? Like, ha- what what was the fire damage? Oh, I see. It's gutted. It's not gone because a large part of it was stone, and mm. so the frame is still there. Okay, but like no walkable roof. No, the roof is there. The roof was stone. Okay. Oddly enough, we established that. We did. Yeah. <laughs> there do it I is. think I could <laughs> climb a ladder on the side and go up? You do. <laughs> Oddly enough, when you were we like established for that. <laughs> And he's like, what's this roof made out of? Irrelevant. No. Relevant. Well, it was relevant before I knew that he was going to set the building on fire. Yeah. <laughs> and then it became super relevant. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would want to climb up there first and see if there's just a wider pattern on the roof, like if it was just this rooftop. You get up and go around to where you knew the original pattern was, and it's just a little puddle of hard wax Mm. the fire has melted everything so you want to walk around and explore the roof yeah absolutely see if i can find any more puddles yeah you don't see any okay all Uh, right so it's probably not just a bigger pattern i'm gonna look out across the horizon see if there are any buildings that look somewhat similar to the the height that we're at yeah roll investigate a mystery we'll do you're trying to figure out where these candles might be located that are the same height as they were in this theater that would be a six. I'm so glad I have this ability now that just lets me teleport to anybody I know well. I never have to lose him again. Every time I turn <laughs> around and he's gone, I just got to go, huh, and then whoop, and I'm right next to him again, which I do when he disappears and ends up on the roof. Okay, so you teleport onto the roof next to him. Yeah. Yeah, he's standing right near the edge, and you start to fall. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> we'll have to roll like a D4 or something to decide which side of him you appear on oh he's my in a bad situation. God. <laughs> oh, shoot. Or do you, unless you want to decide now, like, do you always appear on his right side? Do you always appear in front of him? Do you always appear on his left side? Do you appear behind him? On his shoulders? Creepily behind me? Like, uncomfortably close? Like, (laughs) 
trying to get the gum out of his pocket clothes. On his right. Okay. <laughs> so you're looking out over the city trying to figure out where these candles could possibly be. And you look down and you see Tass's essentially frame of a car that you guys have left behind. And you realize that you have his keys in your pocket still. So you fish him out and you're kind of looking at him and fiddling with the key fob. And all of a sudden Jake appears on your right side and it startles you. And you push the button. And for a brief moment, the horn goes off on the car. It only lasts for like 17 seconds, but it goes for some reason. Um, what? Um, what indeed? Uh, I want to climb back down and head over to the car. Is it really still going off? Is it literally 17 seconds? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I want to go over to the car and try and figure out how it could possibly be doing this without a battery. Like, is the hood still up and shit? Yeah, I mean, the hood is gone. Is gone? Yeah, it's part of the armor, or it was. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what I'm looking for, but, like, looking in the spot where a battery would normally be, uh-huh. seeing if, like, somehow there's battery goo left. I don't understand electronics at all, <laughs> evidently. Um, TJ, did you go with him? Did you stay on the roof? No, I went with him. Okay. Because I wanted I to also help went him down. out. Oh, okay. Anybody know anything about cars? Who's looking in the car? Jake just admitted that he doesn't know what to look for. He thinks there might be battery goo. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the first letter we got was from his brother <laughs> going battery goo. Battery goo. <laughs> Rev, do you know about cars? I do. Not a, not a not a ton anymore uh, because so much is electronic. Uh, but I know a lot about like kind of pre even pre nineties cars. My dad um, was a mechanic for a very long time. Nice. Uh, so. Battery goo. Yeah. Battery goo. Battery goo. Yeah. Jesus. Battery goo. That's such a good moment. <laughs> <laughs> they, oh, I know them. They never retrieved the bless this meth. <laughs> uh, uh, chat saying, cool. I guess I'll bring my car up to you to look at, Rev. <laughs> <laughs> like, if left to my own devices, I'm going to stick something metal in here and electrocute myself. <laughs> Probably. He's going to take a spoonful of the battery goo and <laughs> taste it. it. Yeah. Mm, yes, it's done. This is good. Oh, no. Mm, it's ready. This defeats my armor. <laughs> I do know that um, usually they have fuses, and then there's also the, oh, what is it called? Engine. <laughs> no, it's an electronic thing that uh, splits off the battery into- Spark plug. Yeah. It's a spark plug. <laughs> sure. The Why ro- not? The rotor girder. <laughs> <laughs> no. Transmission. Nope. The alternator. Wheels. There we go. The alternator. Oh, that's a good one. I didn't yeah. think of that. I look at the alternator to see if something's up with it. Okay. Uh, what are you looking for? That was one of those moments that was probably cut and then put back in. <laughs> like, because there's a very clean cut there of TJ going like, oh, yeah, I look down at the alternator and see if they're... And then I went, that needs to be back no, in. No, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> the, ro- the rotor girder. <laughs> the rotor girder. <laughs> Okay, uh, what are you looking for? Are you just looking at it? Um, are you getting inside, I'm trying to turn lo- it around? Yeah, I'm, uh, it apart? I'm, I'm getting inside to see the alternator, see if it's like connected to any other power source besides the battery. Okay. I'll help him out however I can, like when I see him diving in under the hood, trying oh, to like... Like point out the battery goo so he doesn't get into yeah, it. Yeah, don't get, don't eat that battery goo. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, like... If I need That's to my like, favorite Pokemon is battery goo. If I need to like hold anything out of the way or like hold a flashlight for him so he can see better or, you know... All right. Anything like that. I'm just yeah, trying to um, be an extra set of hands. Roll, roll help out. Seven. So, TJ, you get a plus one as you try to investigate the mystery of how is the car got a little bit of power in it. Okay. Back when we used to do help out before. Before rolls. Because we kind of thought that. Yeah, before. Because we thought, like, narratively it made more sense to describe how you were helping out. Uh, but then it was just we realized, like, oh, that you could mess up someone's attempt like you could make it worse so we'll we'll start rolling that after the fact as long as you've got a narratively strong reason for how you could have been helping Mm -hmm. also i know that your favorite pokemon is arcanine because that's the only one that you know that's true (laughs) well that no i mean and battery goo (laughs) and battery goo battery goo is a close second (laughs) that that was that's a good that's a prime example of a joke that could not be cut because we were recording on a single track Mm -hmm. like that that's not funny but i couldn't get rid of it (laughs) Oh, that's a great roll. I didn't need the plus one, but I do appreciate you holding that flashlight. I've got a 14. All right. You get a hold two. And as you hold the flashlight for him to kind of look around and peek throughout, you take a step backwards and you slip on some of the oil that has drained out of the car. Tass, you see Jake 
starting to stumble backwards into traffic. Oh no, battery goo got me again. <laughs> I think that is like one of the only endings we have that is not the actual cliffhanger, but I had to keep that in because it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, prime example right there where um, TJ had a full success. Jake rolled help out, so it put him in danger. But unnecessarily. So, yeah, unnecessarily. And so we stopped So we stopped doing that. Mm-hmm. Battery goo got me Battery again. Battery goo got me again. <laughs> um, yeah. That was a silly episode. That was. That, that, that episode is... Uh, is got a lot of a lot of humor in it. <laughs> um, I think that that was like that was certainly for me an episode of like okay, if someone has listened this far in, mm-hmm. they're they're invested enough. They they enjoy something about the show, so we can I can lean back a little bit on the editing and keep in more of the natural humor that's there that I might have cut out in the first few episodes because I want to get people hooked on the story mm-hmm. um, as like, it's a hard balance when you, when you first start something like this in those first few episodes of what is the tone you're setting. Um, and so there were, you know, a couple edits of episode one, I'm sure with more or less humor until I thought, okay, this is, this is what would get me. So this is what it's, what I think it's going to be. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I think it's, I, I think it's great with the first few episodes being like very, very tight and very focused on story and then this is a great opportunity to see a little more of the personalities uh, and sense of humor of the players yeah um this is great this episode is hilarious i love it yeah i'm trying to think if this is this episode's 47 minutes i'm trying to think if this is the longest one of the first six Mm, i remember episode two being quite lengthy i thought that one was like almost an hour Mm, okay uh, does anyone have any other questions? Um, oh, yeah. Hit, a, uh, hit us with those questions if you have any last-minute ones while uh, I go over our schedule for the upcoming yeah. week. So um, Thursday, the 24th at 7 p.m. Eastern, is going to be a very special episode of Mystery Detectives. It is our detectiversary. Um, we have been doing Mystery Detectives for one whole year, and we are celebrating uh, by getting together with – uh, maybe one or two guests and dressing up in costume and we are going to be playing Clue, uh, which I'm very excited about. Um, and uh, and yeah, it should be it should just be a really just very fun, very chill, very celebratory time as we celebrate this just fun thing that Megan and I thought would just be like a cool thing to do a year ago and then uh, <laughs> Uh, we had we had no idea that it would spawn uh, that it would spawn such a um, such a such a loyal group of Snoop buds. Um, Saturday, the twenty sixth at eight p.m. Eastern, Rev and I are going to be back with a listen through of season one, episode six. We're going to be finishing yes. the first arc, the Halifax Theater, this week. Uh, so please uh, tune in and uh, hang out with us on Saturday as we as we finish as we finish this arc. Um, yeah, show up Saturday and help us decide the fate. Oh of yes, this. is this something that we continue to do? Do we do we let it do we let it go by the wayside? Um, we gotta we gotta make that decision. So yeah, absolutely. Um, hang out with us on Saturday and help us figure out um, if we do more episodes, more arcs. Um, yeah, yeah, we're still we're still not quite sure. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, and then uh, Monday, of course, at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be doing issue eight of the Omniverse Chronicles Masks. It's going to be our finale episode, uh, which uh, I'm I'm both happy about and also sad about because I've I've loved playing masks yeah. so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Tuesday, the 29th at 8 p.m. Eastern is going to be our June AMA with the cast of The Crit Show. So we're going to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, hanging out and uh, asking each other questions and having a, and answering chat questions. Um, yeah, it should be a good time. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of AMAs or Q&As, uh, mm-hmm. the season three uh, Q&A for The Crit Show is almost upon us, so please get your questions in. Uh, you can email them to us at the cast at com, or you can use the Contact Us form on our website. Just be sure to get those questions in by July 2nd so that we can uh, record that Q&A and uh, post it on the July 28th 
episode. Am I forgetting yeah. anything? I don't think so. All I right. believe uh, if everything works out right, that July 28th episode that is the season three Q&A will also end with a little bit of a teaser trailer for the beginning of season four at the end. So I'm so excited. Wah, wah, wah. I'm so excited. Um, uh, I have no idea how Twitch works. Kim, do you just have a bunch of buttons <laughs> about stuff that you may talk about? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a stream deck and one of my folders is chat messages and I just have uh, a whole bunch ready to go that I update uh, depending on what I anticipate we might be talking about or like new things like the fable and folly survey or the Q&A stuff like that yeah it's very useful <laughs> um all right so uh I think if there are no other questions then uh Thank you all so much for joining us, and we will see you Saturday uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern for our listen through of season one, episode six of The Crit Show. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Uh, hope you all have a great night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>